how did you settle on Santa Barbara? I came here on a holiday with my parents when I was 14 years old. I went, oh my God. I said to my father, let's, let's move here. I want to live here. He said, I can't do that. I'm too old. So I just decided this is where I was going to come someday, and that's what I did. This is my second house here. Growing up in uh, the middle of America, there's a kind of puritanical suspicion of anything that's too sensual or too theatrical. And I always said that in the Midwest, if it doesn't keep you warm and you can't eat it, it's suspect. I learned really in Rome to see and to experience directly sensuality, you know, the sound of splashing water, running my hands over old marble surfaces, the turning of corners into light-filled courtyards, and then again into cool, shady streets. Do you usually sit out here and read, or do you have yes, a glass of wine? Yes, I take naps. Nap. I call it the napping loggia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, perfect. Did you have, absolutely perfect. You have shade here and it's cool. It's considerably cooler in here. That is sweet. I, this is my favorite part is right here. It's beautiful. <laughs> well, if I'm given an opportunity, of course, I'm greedy. I want it all. I want to do the architecture, the interiors. I want to design the furniture and I want to do the garden. I see the whole thing as a homogeneous entity. Any room that you can immediately understand, to me, is a failure. I think a room has to be like a friendship. It has to grow, and it has to be understood slowly over a long period of time. What is the color of the floor under the color? What is the color of the lamp as it sits on the table? What color is the table when it's next to a chair? Maybe I use the smallest lamps and low furniture, and it makes the ceiling look high one color for the entire envelope, the walls, the ceiling, and the floor, that makes the space look huge. If I plant the trees here in my garden in false perspective so that the one closest to the house is the tallest and the one furthest away is 10 feet shorter, I've tricked you into believing that my actual area of, of the garden here is much bigger than it is. I think especially in a Mediterranean garden such as this, water psychologically quenches your thirst and your soul. Well, I always tell clients with regarding a garden, there's two things I cannot make. I cannot make great views, and I can't make huge old trees. If you don't have the view, then you have to create something that's compelling that's so wonderful. It's an outdoor room where the scents are so compelling you want to sit there, or the shade makes you feel so cool, or the sound of water splashing. Those are substitutes. At a certain point in your life as you are maturing and you come to recognize that reality is something of a disappointment, you turn to the garden. You're connecting with the earth and you're connecting with the idea of things that grow. You can plant and you can design a garden, but at a certain point you let go because you can't control exactly how things are gonna grow and how the sun is gonna work and what shape the leaf is gonna take. And so it's a very different experience of design and it's a design that has to take into account what it's gonna look like in 10 years, 15 years, as opposed to tomorrow. In a garden, you have these magical moments where you might get the light filtering through the leaves or light sparkling on some dew on a flower. And that's what we captured this morning. Look at that light just coming right down the path. It's perfect. I'm sort of like an idiot savant. I do this very, very well. If I didn't do this, I would be probably sacking groceries.